Last night in the city of brotherly love, there was a little love lost between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. The two faced off for what may end up being their only debate of this presidential campaign. And we're bringing in Stephen Maynard Caliendo from North Central College now to help us break it down because this was interesting and entertaining from the handshake at the start. Absolutely. So let's unpack it first. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, there, there's no question that handshake was really interesting. I mean, yeah. she, she clearly had a plan that she wanted to go out. We haven't seen handshakes very much in uh, presidential debates in the last few years. And so that was clearly a plan. It set the tone uh, for what, what she wanted to do. Uh, and uh, and I think then after that, things started to unravel pretty quickly. Oh, you think they unraveled? Yeah, they definitely unraveled for the for the former president. It was very difficult. She, I think she had a plan. Um, and it was, it was you know, if you think about her being a prosecutor, this sounded like, a, a you know, she set a roadmap at the beginning of what she wanted to say. Mm -hmm. And then each time throughout the debate that, that she made that point, she reminded us that she made that point. And then she summed it up again at the end. It was very organized. So I don't know if that matters. I don't know if people care whether it's organized or not, but it definitely was a lot of preparation that she put into this. We didn't see that from the president. Uh, um, we want to toss to a few moments from okay. last night. Uh, up first, we have this rather bizarre exchange that started with a discussion about fracking and eventually devolved into this. She went out in Minnesota and wanted to let criminals that killed people, that burned down Minneapolis, she went out and raised money to get them out of jail. She did things that nobody would ever think of. Now she wants to do transgender operations on illegal aliens that are in prison. This is a radical left liberal that would do this. She wants to confiscate your guns, and she will never allow fracking in Pennsylvania. And then she went on to respond and say, I'm a gun owner, so is my VP candidate. Thoughts on that exchange? Yeah, I mean, that, this is just, this was one of the tamer exchanges, in fact. I mean, it, it only got worse from here. I know we're going to see some other clips. Look, it, um, she, the plan, part of her plan was to get under his skin, and she absolutely did that. She baited him by um, hitting those, I had a therapist once who talked about tender spots, and mm -hmm. she hit his tender spots, or you could say she pushed his buttons. So when she starts talking about crowd size, right, there, there's, there are these moments where the things that she knew, calling him weak, these are things that she knows that he cares very deeply about, and he just couldn't let it go. He couldn't stay on his message. And, uh, you know, again, I think for people who are going to support uh, President Trump, they're going to be very happy with the way he was tough and the way he performed. But I think if you w weren't sure who looked more presidential last night, certainly Kamala Harris looked mm. more presidential last night. Trump also appeared to at one point blame the Harris campaign for the attempt on his life over the summer. We have that moment. I understand what it would mean if Donald Trump were back in the White House with no guardrails, because certainly we know now the court won't stop him. We know J.D. Vance is not going to stop him. It's up to the American people. I probably took a bullet to the head because of the things that they say about me. They talk about democracy. I'm a threat to democracy. And one of the things that he said during this as well was, I tell the truth. I'm like direct. I'm going, and, and his base really wants that. Absolutely. What right. do you think? Yeah, the plain spoken part of it is is what his appeal has been all along, and he certainly brought that last night. Uh, it was just in contrast to a much more sophisticated message. But I don't know if sophistication is what voters are necessarily looking for. Um, he was angry though, and he was leaning in, and he was clearly angry with the moderators. And, and, and online, we saw a lot of conservatives were upset that, that, that the moderators weren't fair. Look, the role of the journalists generally, I don't have to tell you to, is to be objective, not necessarily neutral. Uh, and, they're, and so when they're fact checking, look, if, if somebody, if there's a house on fire on the block, the, the, the fire department doesn't come and spray every house with the equal amount of water, right? They, they had a job to do. They pushed back on a number of claims that were outlandish, including the fact that, that Haitian immigrants were eating pets. Um, and, and, and folks are upset about that. But we talked about this yesterday, uh, Dana, that the, the moderators have a responsibility. If you, you, you know, they've got a lot of, the, the, the CNN folks got a lot of praise for sort of being fair. I don't I don't know that that was fair just to sit back and let somebody say things that are patently untrue i don't know that that's fair either well and i would agree you know and uh, another um a moderator pushed back also on an abortion claim that uh, trump made that in some states they will kill babies essentially after the babies are born and speaking of that abortion was definitely a heated topic let's listen into a snippet of that conversation it's a lie I'm not signing a ban, and there's no reason to sign a ban, because we've gotten what everybody wanted, Democrats, Republicans, and everybody else, and every legal scholar wanted it to be brought back into the states. Nowhere in America is a woman 
carrying a pregnancy to term and, and, and asking for an abortion. That is not happening. It's insulting to the women of America. Real quick, uh, Stephen, because we have to, we have sure. to thank you. But just your thoughts on on who won that, let's say, abortion. Well, he could look. The, the the problem is he's been making this claim for a long time. He couldn't be more wrong. Nobody wanted it to be brought back to the states. Pro life people don't want state by state decisions. They want a national abortion ban. And people who want women to have reproductive freedom don't want it to be state by state. They want it protected, like Roe versus Wade. So it's just it's a completely wrong claim, and he keeps repeating it over and over and again. And really, it was one of he many. Really doubled down on that one That's in right. particular. That's right. Okay. All right, Stephen. Thank you so much for coming in Great and just sharing you. your insights on that big debate last night. We appreciate it.